Did you know you can paint your cabinets to look like wood? Welcome to my DIY kitchen series where I will be transforming my cabinets, counters, making my own tile backsplash, and hopefully a DIY stone wall without real stones. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are talking about the wooden cabinets behind me. This is actually not wood, I painted this on. In this video, I'll be sharing the step-by-step -step instructions to get this exact look. I'm gonna be sharing why I decided to paint them, even though they're wood underneath, and why I didn't strip them. Um, if you're new to my channel, I do like to share the raw side of things and all of my failed attempts. That way you don't make the same mistakes as I do. I know when you DIY, sometimes you think you have this bright idea and you wanna try it and then you realize it was a bad idea. So I will be sharing those. Um, okay, let's jump into the video. Here's a quick snippet of my kitchen before all of this started. In fact, let's go back a few years. Here's what it actually looked like. And you could see my ugly granite countertops. So originally I had planned on stripping these cabinets and staining the wood. About a month ago, I used citrus strip to strip my countertops. If you've been subscribed to my channel, you have probably seen how, how I painted my granite countertops. That was a bad idea and it ended up being a complete fail. They stained super easy and chipped way too fast. And because they were so easy to strip, I decided to use the citrus strip on the cabinets. I applied it and let it sit for 40 minutes covered with saran wrap. Then I decided to try and remove the paint with my pressure washer. I thought it was a bright idea. This worked great until I came and found them warped the next day. Honestly, the risk of having them all warp was kind of too high for me because it cost so much money to replace each cabinet. And it was such a sticky mess without the pressure washer. I then remembered that I actually did a project like this where I didn't use a pressure washer and I removed the latex paint like this and it was just horrible removing it with um, the mineral spirits. It was such a sticky mess. I can't imagine doing this indoors where my floors are painted and where I have a baby. Plan B it was $150 down in paint supplies. I decided to try and paint the wood effect. Before I jump into this project, I just want to start by saying that this is by far one of the hardest DIYs I have done. I don't know if it's because I had so many failed attempts or, or if it's because I'm just a super picky person, but um, this is a pretty hard DIY. That said, hopefully after I share all of my mistakes, you can avoid those and it will be a lot easier if you try this. In total, I probably sampled at least 15 different techniques and it took me about a week to figure out what I wanted. This side of the kitchen looks like a complete mess because these are all of my failed attempts that I sanded down and this is ready for primer. To prep my cabinets for priming, I went over it with some sandpaper and my sander in the areas that were chipping. And then I lightly sanded the rest of the cabinet. I sprayed everything down with 409 and wiped it down. This helps degrease the cabinets and preps it for primer. For my choice of primer, I went with Seal Grip. If you guys aren't familiar with this, this stuff is amazing. I've been using it for probably like the past seven years. It used to be called Gripper Primer. This stuff literally attaches to anything. I've painted my floors with this like three times already and it's never cracked, lifted, uh, chipped or anything like that. Once my primer was dry, I started by applying my base color which is this peachy neutral color. I'll be adding a list of supplies to my blog post in the description section, as well as a comment pinned to the top. So this peachy color is actually not a color that I picked from the store. It was like acrylic paints that I mixed at home and then I went and got it color matched at the store. So if you want the exact one, um, check out that link I was talking about. For my choice of paint brand, I, for the first time, decided to go with Sherwin Williams, and I even went with the highest end paint. This is not sponsored by them in any way, but I just want to put this out there that I was blown away with their paint. It goes on smooth like butter. The coverage is amazing. Just one coat seemed like it covered pretty much everything. I didn't see any drips. I do think it's worth the money and after using this paint, I don't want to use anything else, honestly. <laughs> Not including the primer, this DIY wood effect 
takes four steps to achieve this pretty wood color. My first step was this base coat. I let it dry for about two hours and I was ready to do my second step. I'm going to try and explain this as easy as possible. You will need to apply a diluted layer of this peach color. To begin, I started by applying just some water onto the cabinet. Then I dipped my brush in the peach color and started blending it all together. You just need like a wet diluted coat of this peach color. If it's too runny, use a damp cloth or a paper towel to wipe it down and just keep blending the whole cabinet. While this is still wet, you're going to take just the tip of the paintbrush and dip it into your water-based stain. For this, I used the dark walnut minwax stain and you'll literally just need like a drop a little goes a long way in total for each cabinet i probably dip my paintbrush in two to three times i tried to do the edges the frame of the cabinet a little bit darker and then in the middle i did about two dark strokes or three dark strokes on the bigger cabinets and then just kind of blend it in so that they're not like solid dark strokes don't forget to do the base areas behind all the cabinet doors as well so here's what it looks like once it's all dry. You could see that it kind of turned that peach color like a gray tone, and this will give you like a very pretty taupe undertone for your wood. So for the next two steps, you'll need to pre-mix your wood stains. You'll need a darker color and a lighter color. You'll also need this floor trowel. If you're not familiar with it, it helps eliminate brush strokes. It can thin out acrylic and latex paints. I feel like having this product will make or break your project because the brush strokes and creating that wood effect is so hard without it. To mix my two colors, I used dark walnut again and this lighter mustard color. I don't remember what it was called, but I'll add a link in the comments for you guys. I did about 20% of the floor trail and then added two to three ratios. So I literally just dipped in my like the mixing stick in twice into the darker color and then once into the lighter color and mix that and then for the lighter color I did the opposite so I dipped it into the lighter color twice and the darker one once uh, hopefully that makes sense so it doesn't have to be perfect as long as one looks pretty close to the darker color one looks pretty close to like a deeper mustard color you need to make sure that step two is completely dry you're gonna take the darker color that you have pre-mixed and start applying it I took a damp cloth and just went over the cabinet to make sure that it's moist before applying my wood stain. And then I went ahead and did brush strokes going in vertical motions. I wiped it off with my damp cloth and I just kept brushing it and wiping it, brushing it and wiping it until it looked like the effect that I wanted. The wood grain will really start to come out when the stain is tacky enough to where when you brush, the brush strokes hold shape. So again, I made sure that I did the edges a little bit darker and then like a few darker strokes in the middle as well. Keep in mind, I didn't do any of the like corners of the cabinets. I did this at the end because I feel like I was just so overwhelmed with getting the front looking good. <laughs> so for the last step, you are simply going to apply a very thin coat of the mustard color. Uh, I let the previous coat of the dark walnut dry completely for 24 hours. I again went over this, over the cabinets with a damp cloth and applied the mustard color and wiped pretty much most of it off. It has to be such a thin coat of the mustard color. It's like almost as if you don't see the yellow, but it's changing the tone of the wood one of my biggest tips that i can give you is having some kind of wood that you like sitting next to you while you're doing all this and the reason i'm saying this is because it's so easy to start to get carried away with it and it starts looking like the shade is off or something which i've done like five times and then i had to repaint so i ended up having this little planter sitting next to me the whole time to make sure that the shade matches each time also, make sure that you do each step and finish all the cabinets with each step before you move on to the next step because it's very easy to get carried away with doing some steps darker or uneven and then you forget how many strokes you did or how much you dipped your brush into something. Don't forget to wash your brushes throughout 
because dipping it into the dark walnut, it'll keep getting darker and darker as you keep going to the next kitchen cabinet. So I probably washed it like every two cabinets. And that's it. You should have your beautiful wood effect. I decided to seal it with this matte polyurethane from Minwax. This stuff is literally my favorite. I don't use any sealers from any other brand. I've tried other brands and they have not held up the test of time. Minwax always has, so this is my go-to. Here's how the cabinets look before and after. I'm in love with this natural wood tone. Honestly, I think it's hard to achieve with actual real wood, so the fact that the paint looks like this, I'm really happy with how it turned out. We still don't have a new range or microwave, so we're hoping to get that. It's kind of making the kitchen look a little sad right now, but it's much better than what we started with. I'm hoping to get some black hardware for the cabinets. Uh, originally, I was thinking to do like a vintage brass, but I feel like it will take away from the wood and maybe distract too much. I do like the rustic and want to keep it that way. I am doing my countertops next, so I will be transforming that ugly orange granite. Um, okay. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.